talking to Strictly Yankees. I'm Jacob Brown, joined here with Mark Papaleo. Um, I'll say I'll say it as bluntly as this: We were, I wish we were happier after an eight four win in Tampa Bay, but we're not because we see a lot of glaring problems with this Yankee team. Problems that we were saying before the season that we might see. Right? Walk, homer, strikeout. That's the entire offense the whole time. That's all they do. It's walk, homer, strikeout, and actually. A new fourth edition this year is double play because they do that a lot too. So the, it's been uh, one of the four outcomes all year for this damn team. It's very frustrating to watch. And I was talking to my dad about it. He said, it's actually boring. I mean, there's there's no thrill in watching this team because you're waiting for three pitches a game because those are the home run pitches and that's the whole offense. Other than that, long at bats, ball four, they don't get the runner in, they don't move the runner over. They don't do this. They don't do that. And it's very frustrating. The pitching has actually been the best uh, part about this team. Although they go into Tampa and shit the bed Tropicana field. You said it before we got on markets of prison and it, it's just frustrating judge already. He's a piece of paper, man. First two or three games. He's already got to sit. What the fuck is left side sore? I've never heard of that in my life. This guy's already out sitting. Boone's like, well, you know, uh, we don't know if he's hurt or not hurt. I, I would have played him today, but I just didn't. He'll probably be back in there tomorrow. Can the Yankees stop with this non-committal bullshit about not telling us when guys are injured, not injured? I'm telling you, a guy could need Tommy John surgery, and Boone will sit up there and be like, yeah, well, um, you know, I think he needs a few days, put an ice pack on, and uh, he'll be out there for his next start, and then a week later he'll be out for the year. I'm tired of that too. I know I'm ranting. It's probably doesn't even make sense. I'm saying shit out of order, but this team, man, they can't fucking hit with runners in scoring position. And I'm tired of it. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, we came into this season thinking we had it all planned out and hit like offense wise. We thought our only question mark was the defense was our pitching and our defense. And we've, we've come into what were we two weeks into the season now? Yeah. And we already realized this is a fucking problem. Luke Voigt needs to get back right now. <laughs> yeah. We need the home run king back because so far this team has no juice whatsoever. And we, I mean, I mean, we talk about Trop, you know, we just took one out of three in Tampa. We're lucky to get one out of three because we did not belong in that ball game. We didn't, but um, we actually saw a lot. I mean, we got the, ba- we got guys on bases today. Gio got some home on some uh, base hit. We saw a bunch of guys come through with some base hits. Rodney Odor, someone who like we just acquired, and I know you weren't so happy about it, but I was kind of happy about it because I had seen enough of Jay Bruce. I've seen enough of Jay Bruce at first. He can't hit. He can barely field. I'd rather you move DJ over to first and have Odor play second until Voight comes back. And and so far that's what we've seen. I mean, he well he's only been active for two games and he's already played started one of them. And I yeah. thought maybe that Saturday game. When they were down 4-0, they should have thro- they should have taken Jay Bruce out and made a pinch hitter for Odor, and then moved him over to first, and then moved Odor over to second. Because I think you need, I need they need to juice it up a little bit. If they, if you're going through a game and you get can't get any momentum, throw someone out there. Give it like give us an, give another look. Right. They've seen these scouting reports. The Tampa Bay Rays not think of for Rogan Odor, you know, before the series. So Saturday, you know, throw him in there instead of Jay Bruce and have DJ move over to first. I thought that would have been a good move to maybe just like just spice it up, give them a different look, and maybe get some momentum in that game. But they never pulled the trigger on that, and I think Boone is more of a all right. This is my lineup, and this is really what's going to happen today. Well, well, to that point, to that point, you know, Boone claims he did that today, sitting Frazier for a second straight game and putting Guardian because he wanted that variation in the lineup. Clint is not the guy you sit. Hicks is the guy you sit because Hicks. Four for 30 coming into the game, put Guardy in center field for a day yeah. and keep Frazier. Yeah. I mean, that's another – I don't even want to talk about Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks had a great home run yesterday for uh, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. For no reason, he had a home run because he got blown the hell out. Yeah. But that was the best he looked all year, and it was one at bat. He is not a number three hitter. He is probably – he's got to be one of the worst number three hitters in the American League. I don't think I've ever seen anything worse. Well, I mean, listen, it's 40 at bats. You know, he's hit third before, but, you know, the the reason they put him there is, I mean, the reason they put him there is because, 
you know, most walks in baseball the last time he was active, sees the most pitches per at bat. It's all these analytics that say, oh, more pitches, you know, you get one that you can hit, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, though, he's a 220 hitter. He'll probably pop out 25 this year, you know, 25 home runs with like 85 RBIs, maybe 80 RBIs, 75 RBIs, something like that. That's going to be him with like a 400 on base. And that they find that valuable because they want Stanton to have a guy on base, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, if that's the philosophy, get Hicks in the two hole. If they're really hell, I'm not saying put Hicks in the two hole, but if they're hell bent about Hicks walks a lot, put him in the two hole and give judge the at bats with runners on base. doesn't make any sense that judge all these years, they have him in this two hole years past. I'm fine with it because the argument was he gets more at bats in the two hole, but he's going to get more RBI chances in the, in the three hole. No doubt about that because you know, DJ LeMahieu, even if he's a 360 hitter, that means only one out of three times guaranteed per game that Aaron Judge is hitting with someone on base. If he's in the three hole, you've got two chances to have guys on yeah. base before he gets up. It's simple math, uh, but you know I'm ranting again. But you know, no, Hicks, I agree. Hicks should have sat if it was about variation. I, I I never agree with Aaron Judge being in the two hole because I always said that was my argument. I mean, DJ doesn't get that many doubles. He does, but like even like the chances of him getting a double are even smaller than one third because he's got to get right. on base at least one third of the time. What are the chances that's an extra base hit that get, puts him in an RBI situation? I think you you got to have your best players at the plate when there's an RBI situation. I don't want Aaron Hicks at the plate when you know, with a man on second and first. Right. I feel like that's, that's a double play, even though Aaron Judge has been a double play machine with base, with runners in scoring position so far. I mean, at least for the first opening weekend of baseball, he was. It was just disgusting. But, I mean, yeah, I just, you're right. He, he should definitely not be number two hitter in my opinion, but I don't think Hicks is the guy to put it to. But if he was going to move, you know, from third to second, I wouldn't be that pissed. Right. I mean, you're right. You're going to bring in the math. You're going to bring in the, you know, he's going to walk and the analytics and shit. Sure. Then put your best players in the best situations, and they're not doing that. I don't want to watch John Carlos Stanton, you know, strike out with with a man on third and man on second. I really don't care. Like, it, it, it's done. It's just – it's, it's disgusting what we've seen so far this year, and it's unacceptable, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, the, the main problem from this offense is everyone's holding the bat too tight. Everyone's trying to do, you know, be the guy. They want to be the guy that knocks in the run, but they're all clearly going for home runs. Clearly. I mean, it's obvious. Not LeMayhew, not Geo, but Stanton, uh, Judge even, Glaber Torres, Gary Sanchez has been better, but he's always been. I mean, as every swing he takes is trying to hit it out big, of the ballpark. Hicks big hit too. Too. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, he did. He did. I mean, he's been hitting really well as well uh, throughout the season. So, um, which is great to see, which ironically, he's been probably the most consistent hitter in the entire lineup, which is like, are you kidding me? I mean, it, coming off last year, this is the guy who's your best hitter so far. Uh, Guardies look good. Frazier, he had a bad three games, and they sit him for two games. Yeah, it's it's like, what are you doing? I mean, we just talked about that, but the problem with the lineup is they get runners in scoring position, and they don't do normal offensive things with runners in scoring position. What you have to do, right? Runner on second base, no outs. Move the runner to third, then get an RBI yeah. ground out, a sack fly. What does this team try do to do with runners on second that. base? Glaber Torres comes up, swings out of his shoes. He's down 0-2 real quick. And as an offense, even as a fan, you watch, it's deflating. You know, you're watching yeah. and you're like, I, I don't think they're going to get this runner home no matter what. Because I think with this team, it's they're not going to move the runner over. So it's a hit or a home run. And that's what you feel like as a fan. And I'm sure that offense feels the same way. Yeah. I mean, one thing I have saw, like, I was positive on Stanton was he did do that the other day. He did that on Saturday. He had a, he, yes, it was, there was a shift on him and the whole right side of the field was open and he shortened up his swing and he opened it up and he just, just tapped it. All you gotta do is tap it right there and you're safe, but you're advancing the runners. And I mean, it's a single, I mean, if, if our lineup could figure out how to hit like that and just, you know, be able to do consistently instead of just look for the fences, they, it would be much better of a watch and they'd probably win more ball games. But I mean, so far we've played three division opponents 
and we've only looked great against the worst one of them. You know, we we lost two. We, we lose two or three against the Blue Jays. We did right. Yeah. No, we lost yeah, two, we out of three. two or three. Yeah, Blue I'm Jays, looking so at their schedule did. right yeah. now. We yeah. had one series win out of the of the three division opponents. Right, and, and we should be Orioles. miles ahead of all three of them. Right. It's, it's you know I can't last the last podcast we did and I came down on the Rays. I don't want to hear anything about the Rays. How like they all bitch complain that they don't have a payroll and stuff like that. Never teams do. But again, they they find these gems. They find them, and Randy Orozarena just rakes. He rakes. Yeah. He like I. Uh, my friend tweeted today, or Rosarena owns the Yankees. Says, no, the Tampa Bay Rays own the Yankees in Tampa. It's disgusting. The Yankees walk into Trop and they forget how to play baseball. It's like the Monstars took all their talent from Space Jam. That's what it is. It really <laughs> is. They take all their talent away when they step foot in Tropicana Field. They get in that freaking basketball ass stadium and they just forget how to play baseball. And it doesn't help when you look up and you got the lights right in your face when you're on for a pop fly. Yeah. But, and there's no excuse to really have. They just they're not playing well. They they, they haven't meshed. They looked great in those couple of games against the Orioles hitting the ball. But and it's the, the Orioles. Rays came in. Yeah, exactly. It's the Orioles. The Rays came in. They have a couple experienced pitchers. So Michael Walker looked okay today at times. The Yankees got the win. He should have got the win. But um, you know, the Yankees somehow prevailed through there thanks to that the the BS man on second extra inning rule. Because without that, I don't think we score a run in extra innings. But. That too. I mean, think about that, right? I mean, you know, I don't think the Yankees could have started off clean today and scored a run in the 10th inning. Like, no shot. No. I mean, that's no. where we're at at this offense where it's pressure situation. We don't count on them at all. And, and listen, they're four and five. It is April 12th tomorrow. Yeah. We I are mean, far away. But we're it's just the overreact- patterns. We're overreacting, but this is what we do as fans. We overreact when we expect something huge. You know, we expect this team – to be 9-0 to start the year. Like, you know, like, like I said, there's 162 games this year. I bet – I wake up and I bet the Yankees every day because I, I feel like they should win. You know, when they're playing teams like this, they should win these games because they are the most – you know, one of the most talented rosters in baseball. But we know baseball doesn't work like that. It's not the NBA. But, it, but you know, you expect more. And, you know, as fans, we're able to overreact like this. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not the 60-game season again. So I think I mean we'll, once we figure it out they'll be all right. But man, has it been a rough start? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like yes, we're overreacting, but also we're not because this is exactly what happened in the playoffs. And, and they did nothing on offense to revitalize it, to change it. It is the exact same lineup from last year. So yeah, no, they don't have Voight right now. Blah blah blah. He wouldn't make this much of a difference. He's the same type. Of, he's better than the other guys at not being just walk home or strike out. But let's be honest, that's who he is. He's walk, homer, strikeout, just like the other guys. He just hits for a better average, and he's more clutch. That's what makes him different than everyone else. But he's the same guy. So that's why I said to you pre-pod, if Glaber Torres cannot improve defensively, bye-bye, because he's walk, homer. He's not even walk. He doesn't walk a lot. He swings at pitches out of the strike zone. He's got very little plate discipline. He should be a 280 to 300 hitter. He's not. Remember, when he was a prospect and we got him from Chapman, everyone said 300 hitter, 25 home runs, this, that, at whatever RBIs. The reason why he's not that guy is because he, he came up, he had 38 bombs against the Orioles, I mean, excuse me, in the year, 13 of them against the Orioles. He got on his high horse. The Yankees were like, keep doing that, keep trying to hit home runs. And he went away from his original approach. I think if they kept him to be, hey, you're Glaber Torres. You're a guy who's going to hit a base hit to right field, hit a double in the right center field gap. Now he's a guy, he swings and misses at everything outside of the strike zone. He misses at things in the strike. Today, swing and miss two sliders in the strike zone. I'm sitting there. Yeah. What are you looking for, Glaber? You're off by a mile. And defensively, and I know Jay Bruce doesn't help, but there are some plays this year that other shortstops in the major leagues would have, would have made. And I, I got to be honest. You're a major league team looking to win a World Series. You can't have that at defense. I'm sorry. And when Gio is your backup shortstop, you've got a problem because Gio is a great defender. He can pick it. He doesn't have range. He's not a shortstop. So, you know, he's, he doesn't have the body type. And that's another yeah. thing with Glaber. He doesn't have the body of a shortstop. He's much better at second base. So unless the Yankees want to say, let's trade high on Gio and say, okay, 
He's about to turn 30. You know, he might decline now that he's getting older. We, we got him in his prime years. We'll ditch him while we can. Maybe they'll sell high on Voight, but you don't want to give up that bat. Other than that, the only option is to trade Glaber because he cannot be the shortstop defensively. And, and I think it's kind of weird because they have taken – I mean, I don't think trading Glaber right now is even a thought in Cashman's head unless there's another shortstop available because you don't have a back you – know, you're trying to win a World Series. You're going to need something very considerable back to trade another – to a young star right now who, I mean, who isn't producing. But like, Well, I, I think uh, Trevor to, Story. You think is, Trevor Story? I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I would love Trevor Story. Don't get me wrong; he's he's one of the best players in baseball right now. He's the best young players for sure. But I mean, is that realistic for us? I mean, I would say so. You, I you, I'd give him Glaber, uh, Albert Abreu, and two other pitching prospects. I give them. I would give him Andujar too. Yeah, right. Throw Andujar in there. Absolutely. I think that would I get it done. Because the Rockies don't, don't have don't, anything; don't, they're barren. Their organization's empty. They're going to be looking for a lot of prospects too. Is the thing they're going to want Glaber too with a bunch of you know, you know, mid level to higher prospects. Yeah, do it. I mean, I I'd, ha- I'd do it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know because because um, they can move him to second bit. They have Brendan Rogers, who was a shortstop coming up from college. They can move him to short. Glaber at second in Colorado. You give a man do hard. To, you know, they don't have Arenado anymore, so they can do whatever they want with there with and do hard. And you give them again, Albert Abreu, Luis Heel, uh, you know, throw in Herman or something. Give them one of Clark or Davey. Uh, give them, uh, you know, I'm just throwing names out. I, I wouldn't start with Clark or Davey, but again, though, we're at you, the you point. Get, you get her, you get her mom way, way before you get those two. Well, yes, I'm just throwing out names, but yeah. I don't think it would take that much to be honest, especially because he has half a year left and then he's gone. So they know they have to get something for him. So I, I think they can get. I think they can give them all that without giving them G, without giving them Glaber. I think they can get Trevor Story yeah, without but giving like, them Glaber. But if you get, and you figure it out that that's a great problem to have. Yeah, but there you can you can always DH someone and get give Stanton day off because he's not hitting home runs all every day because he's really not uh, producing at a high level right now. I just don't think he's that not. works out. It just doesn't like lineup boy. If you're going into the playoffs and you're having to sit Glaber, you might as well trade him because he's not going to start. But you still have years of control of him. You could always trade him after that. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I think if Colorado were looking for a return for story, they would want Glaber. But also the Yankees could say, fuck you. Yeah, you know, you're, you're not going to get they, Glaber from anyone else. Yeah, they're not going to – exactly. They're not going to get a player like that anywhere else because especially when they know you got to move off that guy. It's right. either you trade him or you move off him. So you can, you can send them all of our, you know, decent pro- – like decent above-level prospects. You can send them Domingo. You can send them Andujar. Uh, and I think may, uh, maybe a couple other pitchers gets that done right there. Because that's a starting pitcher in their lineup. That's, I mean, I would maybe throw Clark in there too for that. Because what the hell knows we could worry about for Clark. So, I mean, maybe Jordan Montgomery. Right. Would you right. Would you do that to get to yeah, the story of, and have the on the same team? And then maybe, you know, then maybe DJ is not the same player next year. And you could – you know what I mean? I think it's, yeah. I mean at that position it's really easy because it makes it easy for because you have DJ and you can you can move him anywhere. No, that's that's, what, ju- that's, that's really the great thing about him for sure is yeah. that he can play everywhere. And uh, again, I mean, you know, this team's going to get back. They're they're the Yankees. They're going to win ball games. They start a three game yeah. series against the Toronto Blue Jays this week: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then they get an off day, and the Rays come to Yankee Stadium Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's what this week is. They get. An off day, which is why, by the way, everyone's freaking out. Oh, Herman's sent down. He's done. No, they're sending him down because they have two off days and they know they don't need a fifth starter in the next 10 days. So they're calling up that extra bullpen arm. And that's what it's. It's the Yankees finessing the system. They always do it. They're going to do it like 12 more times. Uh, And then another small transaction. The Yankees traded Tyro Estrada to San Francisco. And uh, honestly, He's better than fucking Wade. Like, come on. Which is what I was going to bring up when I was when we were talking about uh, when we were talking about Glaber. I was like, they just traded away a shortstop for cash considerations that you know could yeah. be there to help us. And like, they're really taking a stab in the dark with Glaber. I thought I was about to. I, I forgot to bring that up actually, but yeah, Tyra Estrada today for cash considerations was weird, which makes me think that I think there's there's got to be they're going to make some trade deadline. 
Because I think they know this. While constructed, this isn't it. This is not yeah. going to win you a World no. Series constructed as it is right now. The way it looks, I think they can get probably another ace by the trade deadline because I'm sure someone's going to want out. Well, I mean, hey, that could be Sevy. I mean, you could trade for one too. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying, like, someone, Sevy someone's going to want too. Either someone's going to want out of somewhere or, or a team's going to trade a veteran guy because they're not going to need him because his contract's going to expire soon and we're going to be able to make a move on that. I don't know. I had, I'd have to look at that to who I would even like give you a short list of it. But I mean, we've seen that happen in the past with East, like with Sonny Gray. Yeah. No, good point. I mean, you know, it, that made me think about too, uh, James Paxton out for the year, Tommy John, Poor guy. he would have been that Poor prime guy. example probably would have been traded this year. Yeah. yeah. Just poor guy. Yeah, that, that's a tough situation. You don't want to see it end like that, but I mean, who knows? That could maybe he gets a better situation in Seattle. Who knows? Because he get he'll be a free agent now after the Tommy John year. Yeah, we'll see. He gets a job. We'll see. We'll see. Hey Massa, come back. <laughs> Please. We need we need Massa bad. And uh Odor took number 18, so we're okay. He could have his number 19 back. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he took Didi's number, which I was like, yeah, you know, I guess it's time. Been a long enough. Why? Why doesn't he wear his title? No, what's who's twelve? Uh someone's twelve. Oh, uh, it was Dietrich in spring training. Okay, all right, that makes yeah. sense. Also, a guy I like, I like to see in the lineup more than Jay Bruce. I would like to see Jay Bruce not a Yankee anymore, <laughs> and Derek Dietrich in a Yankee uniform. Yeah, that gives you another look too. Yeah, right. I mean, you know what you're getting in Bruce. Nothing. Yeah. Their teacher can go could j- go yard with the best of them sometimes. You know, he, he's a big dude, man. He, he can rip him out of the park. And if that's what you're looking for, because you're missing that hole in the lineup is without Luke Voigt there, he's not hitting home runs, obviously. I think by now he'd have four, three or four home runs at least. Luke Voigt in nine games, probably be around there. And we they're missing that. You know, a lot. They're missing that big guy in the middle of the lineup. And, then right and now, I got to tell you, you know, some some might notice without Void out, he really is uh, the energy of, of the team. Yeah. Like when he's out, yeah. it's just like boring. Oh, man, he's he's a good one we got. I'm lucky, we're lucky we got him for nothing from St. Louis. Yeah, right. Yeah, Gallegos and Shreve. That's something Cashman has done considerably well. And then Cashman just can't get that piece. To get them over the hump, Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole is supposed to be that piece. They still need another one. Well, yeah. maybe it's Sevy, maybe it's not. You know, that's the issue. But you know, right now, you know, JMO looked all right. Uh, I'm telling you, I, Klu- Kluber will come Klu- on. I, I see Kluber it. Come, yeah, Kluber looks good. Kluber, as long as he has his control, he's going to be hard to hit. I mean, obviously the Rays did him did him in a pretty decently the other day, but I mean, it's a second start. You know, it's not a big yeah. deal. If that's Garrett Cole having him, all right, you know, what the hell are you doing, Garrett? But, I mean, Corey Kluber, you know, it's a second game from not playing for a whole season. So, I mean, who knows? Yeah, no, I mean, because him, like, the number one thing I noticed with him is he just pitches. You know, he's not a thrower. He's a pitcher, and he, he depends on that location. He was never a velocity guy. So, if he's got the break on his pitches and he can locate – just be Masahiro Tanaka from last year. That's all we're asking for. So I think he can be at least that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but the pitching matchups for this week, um, on Monday night, Garrett Cole will be facing off against Robbie Ray. Um, so to me, that's got to be a win. Robbie Ray making his first start of the year. Anytime Cole pitches, can't be like the Mets and lose uh, with your best pitcher on the mound. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Tuesday night, Jamison Tyone against Yunjin Ryu. And Wednesday's actually a day game. Before an off day on Thursday, it's Corey Kluber against Ross Stripling. So, honestly, I two yeah. out of three at least. I can see them losing the Ryu game, but I think they should they should beat Stripling very easily, like they did. I like they did the opening weekend. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're in Tampa. They're not going very far, so it's not a far trip because the Blue Jays are playing in Tampa. Yeah, in Dunedin. Yeah, they, that minor they, they sell tickets to those games, right? Yeah, they do. They uh, they sold out in 20 minutes for Yankees Blue Jays when they went on sale. Really, that's gonna be a weird game to go to. It's literally a minor. It's, it's got to feel like a spring training. Yeah, well, uh, Mike Trout hit a home run, and someone on Twitter did Google Maps of where the ball landed, and it landed on an elementary school playground or something. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Mike Trout goat hitting on an elementary school playground is crazy. <laughs> 
Um, Mike Trout's your, is Mike Trout your goat? He's got to finish his career before I say that, but he's on pace. Got to fucking do something. You gotta win win first, exactly. Yeah, you're right about that. Fucking, yeah, I don't want a playoff series. Do you want a playoff game? That's right. I think they got swept that year against Kansas City. Yeah, that they got one swept, year. They, I think. Yeah, uh, it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. You're right about that. Don't give me Barry Bonds oh. though. Well, Adiel tells me it's Barry Bonds. It's not. It's not a bad argument. I wouldn't give you Barry Bonds anyway. Barry Bonds is up there. I don't care if he gets steroids, to be honest with you, unless you're like – I mean, because you still got to hit the ball. You still got to hit the ball. And yeah. saying, you know, Barry Bonds did it without steroids for a majority of his career. So, we'll see. I mean, yeah, I think Barry Bonds has a way better case than any other guy – any other void heads. Yeah, he probably does. He probably does. So – and I believe this is his last year of eligibility. So, I uh, – Really? That's shitty. Yeah. That's shitty because he's one of the best to ever do it. He really is. I they mean, really should just let him in. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's I stupid, get it, man. It's in. stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. Like, it, I get it. Baseball is different than all the other sports. You know, it's more prestigious than getting in. Like, the NBA lets everyone in, and the NFL lets usually <laughs> everyone. Like, Joe Namath in the Hall of Fame, and he has more career losses than wins and more interceptions than touchdowns. So, I mean, I get it. Those are different. Like, MLB is different. Yeah. But, like, you still got to hit that ball. You know, you still got to be healthy and play all those games. It's not that it, just because you do steroids doesn't make it that much easier. It does make it easier to jack them, but that's about it. No, you're right about that. You're, yeah, you're right about I that. Mean, people will say Babe Ruth the goat. I'm like, all right. 1920s no, not baseball. when you play six teams. Yeah. 1920s baseball and you're not the goat. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Like, yeah, when t- people say, oh, Ty Cobb is the best hitter ever because he played three people. Come on. Who, who, was, th- who was throwing 95 then? <laughs> yeah, who, who had a uh, splitter like uh, like fucking Tanaka or some shit? Nobody. Yeah, no fucking. one. Yeah. I mean, here, with all respect to all those old timers, but uh, it's not one of those guys. No, I totally agree there. So yeah, If uh, it wasn't going to be one of those guys in there, it would be like DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle. Yeah, like once you get to forties, fifties, you know, like that's that's yeah. where you go. Okay, now it's getting more respectable. Like they're, they're athletes. Those guys are athletes. Like right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Some of those guys were in the war too. I mean, those guys were they were dudes. Yeah, World War II vets. Yeah, they went to the war and came back and played baseball again. Absolutely. So the 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 division right now in the AL East, uh, the Yankees, Orioles, Rays, Blue Jays, all tied at four and five. And the Red Sox are six and three. Okay. Um, not worried really at all. I mean, I'm I don't I'm not worried. I just can't stand the Red Sox fans thinking they're good at baseball. Yeah, they're just not. They don't have a rotation. Is, no. Yeah. They're hit. They're hitting the fuck out of the ball. They are hitting moonshots. But I mean, their rotation is not going to keep up the whole year. Hey, playoffs so. first, and then then see what they say. Playoffs first. We gotta get there to ourselves. We got to win the division. I'm not feeling good, but this team going in the wild card game. If we get into a wild card game, I agree. Uh, I would be unless very unless Garrett, unless Garrett, Garrett Cole's throwing 14 or 13 strikeouts again in seven innings, then then I'll feel good about it. Yeah, 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 exactly. He lit it. So, he, lit it he lit it up, man. Yeah, no. When he was with the Astros, man. I mean, you know, that's uh, that was prime wow. Garrett Cole. No, that was against the Orioles I'm talking about the other day. Oh, oh, yeah. No, he was great. In seven. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, he oh, was great. Unhittable, man. Unhittable. Yeah. For sure. But. So, Yankees play six games this week. When we do our pod next week, what do you want the record to be in those six games? Four and two. Give me four and two. Give me three and three. I'll be okay with that, too. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, you know, you go two, three. Yeah, four and two. I'll take four and two, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think you Six. We have we have the blue. Are we doing the same kind of thing last year with the record with the schedule? What do you mean? Only only our like only us and the and the NL East, or are we playing everyone? No, we're playing everyone because after uh, uh, we're playing so we're playing so many you know division opponents right away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of annoying after last year. Yeah, it's but weird. Yeah, after after the Rays, we get the Braves, but then it's Cleveland, Baltimore, Detroit, Houston. Oh, Baltimore again. Like oh. Jesus. Hey, Houston that, comes to that, Yankee Stadium it. first week of May. Oh, God. I'm, oh, I'm fucking waiting already, dude. Uh, I'm, I cannot wait for that game. Or all three, really. And But they're in the middle of the fucking week. 
I need Garrett Cole on the mound 100% in one of those games. Give me it all day. All day. Altuve to the brain. I don't even care. Yeah. yeah he's care, starting to him. hit a little bit. It's like, yeah. fuck him. I hate yeah, all of them. Hit we're him not in over the head. it. And we're nah, not going to not be over it. Okay. I have so many people. Steve's like, I don't get people who are still not over it. It's been two years. What? Well, we didn't get a year to really, you know, abuse that. Right. We didn't get a year. You know, it was COVID. I went, I went out in Fort Lauderdale uh, on Friday night, and there was a girl wearing an Astros jersey. She walked by a booter. <laughs> I believe as loud as I could. You're doing and your I job, want- Mark. You're doing your job. Oh, man. All right, man. So uh, we uh, we went over these first few weeks to some people. It might sound like a uh, however long this is of ranting. Um, yeah. But, uh, hey, we're, we're, we see problems and we're fucking saying it out loud. That's what we got to do. We're Yankee yeah. fans. We're honest. And uh, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to come back with a pod. Same thing as last week. After a week of games, we'll review and then preview the upcoming week. We'll do it every week. Um, and uh, so we're, we record these on Sundays. Um, so look for them to come out every Monday. So uh, maybe not every week we'll record Sunday, but mostly Monday, whatever. Uh, we're going to try and get these out on Mondays because it's a better day to do it um, for baseball purposes. So, uh, all right, Mark, this is a good one. We'll see you next week. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Strictly Sports P and on Facebook and Instagram at Strictly Sports Productions. You can watch this on YouTube. If you look up Strictly Sports Productions, go to the playlist section. All five of our podcasts are separated into playlists. So you can see us. You can see the other four. Do whatever you want. And uh, Mark, plug your Twitter real quick because you've been uh, basically a Yankee burner account this week. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been roasting the Yankees all week and you know, live tweeting these games. You can follow me at Mark Papaleo Junior fifty five on Twitter and Mark Papaleo ten twenty four on Instagram. Actually, so very nice, very nice. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, and also, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, IR Radio, and Spotify as well. On addition to YouTube. Okay, yep, so that'll do it. I'm Jacob Brown, that's Mark Papaleo, and we will see you next week.